school, then I'm a herper. Over the past decade, I've mentored countless individuals in the safe handling of venomous reptiles in captivity. These are my venomous etiquette videos. I hope you enjoy. In this episode, episode one, we're gonna go over the do's and don'ts of actually entering a venomous room. One of the first things you may ever do when handling venomous reptiles in captivity is enter the room incorrectly. Whose room is it? What animals are you gonna be working with? And are all the safety protocols and procedures in place for you to properly enter that room? We're gonna take a look at a couple different facilities and show you the goods. Underground Reptiles was kind enough to allow me to show their venomous rooms at their farm in Parkland, Florida. They have two rooms, one for animals being bought and sold, the other one for animals being held back for breeding. Before you ever actually enter the room, your mind needs to be clear of distractions. You need to focus on the task at hand and realize that the stresses in your day-to-day -day life can be something that can cause a life or death situation once you start handling venomous animals. Before actually entering the venomous room, take note of your surroundings outside the door. Posted signage such as danger venomous reptile or reptiles of concern, and any tools or equipment that may be outside the room. This is the primary venomous room at the farm. Notice how the door is locked and the lights are off. For the purpose of this training video, the door has already been unlocked. However, we can't see inside, so the use of a handheld flashlight or torch is essential to seeing if any animals have escaped and might be on the floor in front of us. We scan the room with the flashlight or torch to make sure that everything's clear and then we proceed to unlock and or open the door. I use my hand to turn the knob and then follow up by using the hook to actually push the door open. We continue to scan with the flashlight, especially above the door, the door jam, and the frame of the door. This is a key spot for our boreal species to perch up. The light switch happens to be behind these vision cages, but because it's so dark, I don't want to just reach my hand in. So we'll use the flashlight to scan more and look behind the cages and make sure that a snake isn't waiting for me deep in that dark hole. Now we find ourselves at the second venomous room. This room is used exclusively for breeding animals. These animals are long-term captives that will be used to continue breeding projects here at the farm. Notice how there's a snake hook outside the room, again, keeping aware of my surroundings. The reason why is because there's no window to this room and I can't see what's inside. The lock's already been unlocked for the purpose of the video and I'm gonna use the actual hook and hand to unlock the door and then pull the door towards me. Now that the door is open, I'm going to continue to use my handheld flashlight to scan the room for possible escapees. I check the floor, the stairs, and the space above the door frame. These metal racks, although very convenient and useful, can also be quite hazardous. The space in between the metal bars makes an ideal perch for an arboreal species to just be waiting and strike out. The light switch again behind the wall was not thought out with the idea of venomous in mind. So I have to use my light to scan and once I know the coast is clear, I can use my hand to flip on the actual light switch. Once the room is fully illuminated, I make my full entry into the room. I'm continuing to scan my surroundings, checking all of my lids, my latches and my locks I need to make sure that everything is status quo and everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. Make sure you don't go reaching into any nooks and crannies before you look in them. My good friend Michael Evans was kind enough to let us show his facility and show off some of the things one might look for in a venomous room. Notice the venomous placard on the main door, as well as the key locked entry with number pad. Once we've made entry into Michael's room, we look on the bottom of the door and notice a door sweep. This is a rubber pad or fin that's bolted to the bottom of the door to prevent anything from going underneath the main gap in the door. It's very easy for a baby snake or lizard to climb through that air gap. On the right side of the threshold, we'll notice a couple tools, goggles, keys, scissors, and anything else that might need to be hung up for easy access. 
On the left side, we'll notice a set of hooks hanging in little hook caddies. Notice how the handles of the hooks are facing up for rapid deployment and use. Essential to any venomous room is a series of bite protocol procedure books. Each book is catered to the individual species being kept in the room. You'll also notice a small first aid kit and some latex gloves. Above that, on the ceiling, we'll notice an AC vent. This is connected to the main ducts of the central air. You'll notice the gray material sticking out the sides of the vent. That is a fine mesh screening that is adhered and bolted behind the main vent to prevent any baby snake from climbing up into the central air duct. One of the main tools that is paramount to an adequate venomous room is some form of retaining vessel. In this case, a large Rubbermaid trash can is used to contain snakes while the cages are being cleaned. The trash can has wheels in the bottom that are attached to a main swivel base. Notice the venomous reptile sign and the locking lid. We open the lid always towards ourselves as a shield. That way, if there's any kind of snake at the top or a spitting cobra, we can use that shield to our advantage. When closing, we want to slide the lid, making like an eclipse, so the snake is less prone to spit or strike or react to the opening in the gap. Always be alert and aware of your surroundings when in the venomous room. And remember, if something feels wrong or uncomfortable, it probably is. There's no shame in avoiding a situation.